Welcome back to the land of Seeker, and uh, yeah, we have a bit of an issue here. As you can quite clearly tell, we have a large enemy army attempting to take Luan. I am really not wanting to go into a battle here against them. They've already taken Tianlong, as you might expect. I mean, obviously, at the end of the previous episode, we had a uh, pretty pretty lengthy ways to go until we actually got all the way back here. I was all the way back in my settlement, and obviously my uh, my own territory is very far away from that. Uh, we also have a, a couple of parties. They're actually roaming around together, surprisingly enough, which I gotta say I'm very pleased about, because if they're roaming around together, that means that things are going a little bit better than anticipated because obviously I don't really want them to run around and get themselves killed in any way. I'm going to put everyone on defensive for the moment because generally in the starting, um, shall we say, the dawn of a new faction or whatever you want to call it, you kind of need to be a bit defensive in these cases. Anyway, you can see here these are my statistics. Oh yeah, I, I just want to mention something real fast. There was a, a comment a couple of days ago, maybe... Maybe even maybe even longer than that, actually. It might have been like five or six days ago, actually, now. But um, basically, mods do work. Mods do work with the Land of Seeker. But you have to be a bit careful about what kind of mods you use. If they are quality of life mods, I think the comment actually mentioned this uh, specifically. So thank you very much for letting me know about this, because this is great. It basically means that things like Chaos's Tweaks and uh, Best Auto Equip and stuff like that actually does work you just have to have the right version for the game and it should work with uh with the land of seeker so that's just a small little psa right there if you if you wanted to use mods like chaos tweaks and so on and so forth then you can of course do that for me personally i think i'm probably just going to leave it the way it is at the moment i might get best auto equip because i absolutely love that mod i think it's so incredibly useful and what we're actually going to do is we're going to go in here in just a second. I just need to make sure that we, um, my garrison actually starts um, de destroying the enemy's forces. You can see here that I think they're actually are they trying to are they are they literally trying to destroy the walls? That is probably not a very good idea. Unfortunately, Yu Chang actually got himself taken prisoner, who is indeed one of our vassals. So that is not very nice. Um, but I'm actually thinking of just going straight on in. I am really just thinking of just going straight in here because I don't know what the walls are are like. This is actually something that I would like to see added to the tooltips on the um, on the campaign map because I mean you can you can quite clearly tell why because I literally mouse over this and I have no idea what HP the walls are at. It doesn't tell me. So I have no idea whether I should go in now or whether I should wait a little bit longer or anything like that. So it's a bit of a quandary to be in. But whatever the case, I will be going in in just a second. We're just going to wait until daytime and then I'm going to go in and we'll see what we can do. Um, I'm a little bit worried about my parties now as well because they are... Oh, are you serious? This I don't even understand these guys sometimes. Oh, wow. Th yeah, this is actually a very strong army, as you can quite clearly tell. All right, I'm, I, I don't think I can actually do this. Going to have to leave. That is um, that is a bit too strong. I, I actually wonder, can I... Um... No, I don't want to break in to help the defenders, but can I actually get the garrison to sally out? I don't think that's even possible at the moment. But these guys really do want to destroy the walls. I mean, it's never going to happen if they continually summon catapults. Or at least I think that it's very unlikely. Ah, uh, you know what? I really just want to go in here. So, yeah, we're just going to go straight on in and we'll see if we can win. Um, it's a lot of units. It is a lot of units. 800 plus units that we're going to have to deal with here. But I am very much hopeful that we'll be able to achieve a victory. So we'll see what we can do about that. All right. So here we go. Let me see here. Mm, right. Okay, we're gonna need someone to go here. So I'm gonna see. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna make. Uh, I'm gonna make our little devour demon person. He's gonna be leading. Actually, we've got two of those. There we go. Oh yeah. By the way, I've been. Um, I've I've been completely messing up the uh, distinguished service level ups. Apparently, um, I I am. I mean, I obviously found this out in the uh, in the previous episode. But you can level up. I think it is two. 
two different skills and then you can level up three different skills and then you can level up four different skills. So there's actually that to consider as well because if I had done a slightly better job, then my companions would be absolute monsters right now. But as it stands, well, I mean, maybe it's good, you know, maybe it's good that they're not absolutely incredible beasts that cannot be stopped because that just means that everything's going to become a lot more trivial. Um, and that's maybe not that fun, but well, wh whatever the case, I'm going to try very hard here to achieve victory. Let me see what I can do. Okay, so I actually want to eliminate this cavalry unit, if at all possible. Let me see where he's going. Let me see if I can snipe him, possibly. Ah, the rocks. Mm, yeah, it's lovely. Okay, are you going to... Hmm... Well, that's, uh, that's actually kind of interesting. I'm very surprised that he went off in that direction, considering his forces are over there. But I do really want to try and eliminate that enemy. I think it is a uh, an enemy lord. I think it might be an enemy lord. And if it is, then it's... Uh, uh, actually, it's not. Never mind. No, it's just some random. Okay. I'm not even going to bother. I'm not even going to bother. It just seems like a bit of a ruse to me, and I'm not going to... Not going to have anything to do with that, thank you very much. So what we're instead going to do is I'm very much hopeful that I can place my forces just on the other side of that bridge and I'm very much hoping I'll be able to bait the enemy into following me. This is going to be very, very difficult to do, bear that in mind. Oh, especially considering the enemy is literally just standing there. They are literally just standing there. This is very strange to me. I, I guess... Um, they're worried about our 20 cavalry that we have when they outnumber us so dramatically with 800 units. I mean, that that is a little bit strange, I must admit. I really don't know why they're doing this. I mean, my forces, I mean, my cavalry are uh, doing some pretty bad stuff right now. So I'm actually going to tell them to run away for the moment. Don't really want my... Uh, my cavalry to just run in there and get just massacred for nothing. You know, that's going to be really, really bad, isn't it? So definitely don't want to have that happen. But it's very strange what's, it, what's even going on here. I mean, I don't have a huge amount of cavalry, as I say. So the only reason why I would assume that a uh, an enemy force would adopt this strategy is if I had my original eggplants for example if i had my original eggplants i could definitely see the reason why you would go into this formation but as it stands i don't see the reason for it i really don't see the reason for it so this is going to be interesting one way or the other so i'm just going to try and pepper them as much as possible try not to take too much damage try not to get stopped in my tracks by trees this is a very difficult place to actually do this as well i don't know whether they chose this on purpose or whether it was just dumb luck but they actually do seem to be making things much more difficult for me than usual yeah uh, can't, can't i shouldn't go really that close all right we're gonna move our forces i guess we're gonna move our, our infantry up ahead here i mean there's not much i can do apart from do that because if we don't move our infantry it's uh it's basically going to be a case of them just standing there and we need to we need to murder as many of them as we can. There we go. Getting some good shots. Not too bad. Don't really want to take more damage, please. Thank you. Okay, Darian got himself murdered. How did Darian die, by the way? Is he getting... Oh, they're getting murdered by those guys over there. Uh, oh, yes, of course, isn't it? Uh, that is always the way, isn't it? Absolutely fantastic, yes. So the enemy's cavalry actually went into fight my cavalry and because they outnumber them they were able to uh, defeat a couple which is obviously the reason why Darian died well he's not dead I, I hope at least I hope he's not dead but he's definitely out of the uh, out of the battle for now okay so that guy has been eliminated hopefully he's going to die very soon as well and where is where, where are the other cavalry I actually need to do something about these guys so I'm gonna go over there see what I can do about them hello there sir Oh, oh, that's actually an enemy leader. Can I can I eliminate him? I've got nine arrows remaining. Highly unlikely, in my opinion, because he's just going to be evading me as much as possible. Not on purpose, just because I am very good at shooting, as you can quite clearly tell. Yeah. Yes. 
that happens. Maybe I should just get out my pole arm and have done with it. Let me just move my forces a little bit closer. I'm not entirely sure how many thrown weapons we even have left. I don't have the ammunition counter as well, so it might be an idea for me to get that too, because I think that is indeed a quality of life improvement rather than anything else. It's not really going to interfere with the game, uh, game's culture or you know units or anything like that, so it shouldn't be too bad. Anyway, um, yeah, this is... Okay, they're actually charging us. They're actually charging us. Okay, let's let's do this. I'm actually thinking of holding uh, holding fire. Should I just hold fire and just go to town with them? Actually, I don't know. Maybe it's not worth it. Okay, that's some good damage. Can I get some more? I am getting good damage, but unfortunately some of the time I'm partially hitting shields. And that is actually making things more difficult. Because, of course, they take reduced damage as a result. But we seem to absolutely be running them down right now. Which is super surprising. I think it is just purely because of that new weapon. I think the new weapon is making a massive difference in how effective my forces are in actually dealing with units when they're fighting in such a tight space. I know this isn't really a tight space as in we're fighting in a keep or something like that. But it is definitely going to make a big difference in regards to how fast they are able to swing. Because as I've said before, I've, be I've been beaten by literal, I don't even know, tier three, tier four archers. Just purely for the fact that some of the time I have a weapon that is just not, not fast enough. It's just not fast enough to be able to beat them in comparison to their hand axe or whatever they have at the time. And that really makes a massive difference. So that's the reason why I decided, you know what, I'm just going to sacrifice a little bit of damage from our Thamaskeen Steel two-handed and go for something a little faster. And that's the reason why I was actually looking for the Dark Broadsword, which is obviously what the Obscure Soul Judge Knights use. That's absolutely amazing. That's a wonderful, wonderful weapon, but unfortunately I couldn't find it. So, you know, must be a, must be a unique weapon to that particular... A particular unit type which is very sad very very sad to me but you know it's uh it's it's no wonder to be honest i i don't blame the the modding team for you know hiding those uh, very strong weapons away because let's face it if i had an entire army that was basically almost as strong as obscure soul judge knights then well you can kind of tell what's going to happen. You know, we're just going to steamroll everything. But this is the best that I could possibly do in comparison to the Dark Broadsword. As uh, it does have some decent swing speed. I was trying to get the, the best swing speed for a two-handed as possible. Try and get a good balance between damage and, and swing speed, of course. And uh, yeah, I think that actually seems like a victory for us. Very surprised, got to say that. Really thought that we were going to have some big issues here. And considering my... Uh, my garrison was actually untouched. I do want to check the walls, though. I'm going to check the walls after this, if it actually shows me, even. Because as far as I am aware, I'm not even sure whether it does. I think it might be one of those cases where it just doesn't show you that information unless you go into the town itself, which... Well... Yeah, you know, that's... That's a bit of a pain, in my opinion. Just for... I don't know. I mean, generally, uh, it, from a realistic standpoint, just think about it from a realistic standpoint. If you stand far away on a hill somewhere and you see that your 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 castle or town or whatever is being bombarded, is being besieged by huge siege engines, you're probably going to notice whether the walls have been damaged significantly. At least that's what I'd think. You know, you, you could see the crumbling stone. You could see that there's basically nothing left if it's been heavily damaged or whatever the case may be. So it's it's very visual in that in that respect. Anyway, we're going to get one of these obscure soul judge knights. And then I'm just going to showcase this. this the, well, should we say the proper way to train uh, your companions? Because <laughs> I completely... I completely failed with this. So we're going to go for scouting, I believe. Yeah, scouting, tactics. And we also want to go for other things like, well, leadership is also good, but steward is also good. Medicine, engineering, and so on and so forth. So you can do three to begin with. Then you can do some more scouting if you want to. I think ta uh, scouting and tactics are actually pretty useful. And then we'll do medicine as well. I think we can only do three. Yeah, so we can only do three twice. But that, uh, that is actually much more than I was doing beforehand. I was doing one, 
I was tagging one skill each and every time, which was really, really bad. But may maybe not so bad, because it did increase the athletic skill of that particular unit by a pretty significant amount. So I don't know. Anyway, we did get 8,000 for this. I'm going to be taking all of them prisoner, as you do, you know, because I've actually now decided that we're going to start taking prisoners. And, you know, why, why is this guy called Witch King? That is such a, that is such a cool title. All right, well, whatever the case, um, I was actually thinking that maybe, shall we go full evil? Should we go full evil and actually start executing every single person that we come across? Because if we do that, people are not going to want to join us. Do bear that in mind. People are not going to want to join us. We can't, you know, try to persuade them and come over to our side or anything like that. So it's going to be a little bit more a case of, well, I just have to make companions into the best possible you know, candidates to fill my ranks. That's pretty much all I could do in that situation instead of having to rely on vassals joining me. And yeah, actually, that might even be a better way to do it because your companions are probably going to be a little bit more, um, uh, I don't know, a little bit more loyal or something like that. I, I don't know. But whatever the case, I will... I don't really want to take the, all these prisoners. I, I will take, I will take some of them, but it's it, they're, they're not going to sell for a lot. That's the only thing that I'm really concerned with right here. Um, let me see here. Ooh, we got. Oh, now that's a nice helmet. Hello there. All right, let me actually just go and give that to Darian. Boom. He looks silly. He looks silly because his armor doesn't match the rest of it. But there you go. And, uh, yeah, and then he's going to get some better braces, a better cape. There we are. He's doing much better. Nice, a nice little, uh, nice little horse right there. And maybe we could actually give him a better saddle, too. I actually have some really good saddles, hilariously enough. Didn't realize. Okay, let's give him one of those. There we are. And then we'll just take the rest of the loot, I suppose. There we go. All right. So, here's the thing. I need to take Tianlong back, so obviously I'm going to be heading on over there and doing that. Unfortunately, we do have 51 units that are wounded at the moment, so that is obviously going to be a bit of a bit of a spanner in the works, as they say. And we're otherwise going to just go in here and just... Well, we're not going to ransom these guys, obviously, but we're going to ransom everyone else apart from the evil flame knights and there we have it i think yep yep i think that's it 7200 and then we're just going to basically put these guys in the dungeon here it says 163 minus 116 i actually have no idea what that means i can assume that maybe they just have too many units do they have too many units in here or I have no I have no clue actually. I'm going to I'm going to take as many as I can and then we'll just sell them because they're not going to get um you know they're going they're not going to get converted anyway because I don't have um I don't have uh, improved garrison, you know. I don't have the improved garrison mod, so I'm not going to be able to do that anyway. So yeah, uh, otherwise I don't think we have anything else in here. No, nope, I don't think we do. All right, there we go. So there's another 6,000 for us. Not too bad. All right, so we have 76,000. Okay, well, we're just going to sell a bunch of stuff right there. There we go. That's easy enough. And then I'm going to make my way on over to Tianlong. I would have liked to have regenerated myself just a little bit before heading on over here, but I feel like time is of the essence. Not sure if that's just me feeling a little bit uh, under pressure, shall we say, but... Um, I think it might very well be the case that we just need to be decisive, fast, and make sure that things get done as soon as possible. That's pretty much all we can really do. I'm basically just going to allow, in these kinds of situations, I'm just going to allow my forces to auto-delegate and they can just do whatever they want to do. Because as it stands, I don't really feel the need to command them right now i think we should be fine hopefully we're not gonna lose too many units in the process and um uh, you know what i'm gonna level up my uh, can i can i actually oh hello there okay you 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 guys are you guys are kind of harsh <laughs> there's a bunch of pole arm users in the um in the infantry line there so i'm super worried about dealing with them but hopefully i'm not gonna get poked and then I'll die instantly. Oh, that was a nice hit. Very, very good. 
Can we get a couple more of those? Ouch. Bear in mind that when I charge into enemy infantry, they can use my own speed against me. So that's the that's the main problem there. We really don't want to get them a straight on hit. That would be very bad. But we also don't want to stay right next to them. So I'm just going to run around them a little bit here. Try and get a little bit of much needed experience for my pole arm. Oh, down there. <laughs> Yes. And there come my eggplants. Okay, fantastic. That is exactly what we want to do. And they are going to absolutely obliterate every single other enemy in sight. And uh, some of them are, of course, going to retreat, which is absolutely fine. But we are done. Get them out of there. There we go. All right. So there's only two enemies remaining. I'm actually surprised that they're still fighting. Is the enemy vassal still alive? I think that could be the thing. Mm, no, okay. He wasn't still alive. Okay, that's interesting. Kind of surprised that they still remained in the battle because usually what's going to happen is if you eliminate the enemy vassal, their their morale is going to take a, a huge nosedive and it's just going to be just that much easier to um, force them to retreat, which is obviously one of the strategies that you can utilize. But anyway, uh, let's just recruit all of those guys and then we'll move on. Okay, so let's have a look at... Wow, they put 234 in here. Are you serious? Okay. Uh, that's... Um... Oh, actually, no. They only put 160? Okay, that is kind of weird. All right, well, whatever the case, we're just going to be making a battering ram and a siege tower. Hopefully, by the time all of that is done, we will have regenerated just a little bit. It's going to be very, very important that we do this. Get a Dark Wave Knight as well. There we are. All right. So now all we can kind of cross our fingers and hope for here is that the Aryans do not have another army that is significantly powerful enough to launch a siege against any of the other fiefs that we have. We also have to bear in mind that if we do end up taking Tianlong again, which is looking pretty probable at the moment, but if we decide to do that, ah, here's the, here's the other army that, that I was talking about. Um, but yeah, if we decide to do this, it is going to make... Wow, this is actually a significant force. Huh. Not as significant, because now... <laughs> did they make the same mistake? Yes, they did. They made the same mistake. That is hilarious. Okay, yeah. So as I was saying, basically, if we take Tianlong, and then we take Marinia Castle, or Dong Zhuao, or whatever, then... The, the the problem is these other factions nearby to us are going to feel a little bit threatened and then they're going to think, oh, maybe we should declare war against that, that upstart faction, you see. And that's where things are going to get a bit messy or a little bit messier, shall we say. Anyway, here is generate shared experience. That actually could be really, really useful. Uh, yeah, probably going to be doing that because that also increases my party size just a little bit. And what else can I do but go straight on in? And this is another one of those times where the enemy has just too much enthusiasm. They have too much enthusiasm for this particular fight. And they have now shot themselves in the foot. I mean, if it were me, I would have shot one of my own, my own, uh, my own troops like I normally do. So, yeah, that's exactly what they're doing. <laughs> you know, proverbially or whatever. So yeah, that, that's it's very much, um, it's pretty amusing to me actually, because it's nice to see that uh, the AI can actually do these kinds of things. I mean, we've seen it time and time again in the past, but it's just very reassuring, because obviously if the AI made no mistakes whatsoever, then it would be very, uh, very predictable, and it would be a bit frustrating at times as well. And it's just very, I don't know, sometimes it's just nice to see that the AI can actually fumble a little bit you know what i mean at least that's what i think anyway um yeah we're just gonna auto resolve i mean not auto resolve but auto delegate yes that's it <laughs> uh we're just gonna just gonna auto resolve while we're in the battle yeah that seems like a good idea doesn't it anyway i'm just gonna try and eliminate some of their cavalry okay apparently not because apparently they just they took the hit and they were perfectly fine with it okay can i N no get him yes there we are can we get a little bit more damage? Yes, we can. I'm just going to wander through the enemy's ranks at the moment. Seems like not many of them have pole arms. So should have a relatively easy time of dealing damage. 
they are they are very what they are they are not um they are not lightly armored i mean at the very least they have a lot of hp these guys have a lot of hp i'm hitting them for 190 there i hit someone for 190 and he just survived he just thought to himself you know what i'm not gonna go down today you know i'm not gonna die i'm just gonna live <laughs> and just continue murdering that seems like what some of the enemy units decide to do which is very amusing in itself but I think after this, the Yarians are probably going to try and declare peace with us, which I wouldn't... I, I'm not sure if I would accept it. I'm not sure if I would accept it, because on the one hand, I think, yes, give me that peace agreement. Give me all the tribute that you can possibly muster. But on the other hand, I'm thinking, well, where am I going to get my influence from? Where am I going to, you know, uh, level up my troops and so on and so forth? Because while there are some very worthy opponents in the land, for example, all the, uh, you know, the rare spawns and everything, I mean, if you can call them rare spawns, but all those unique armies that you can fight, they are there, but they are very, very dangerous, and you can quite easily end up losing against them if you don't have the right units available at the time. And if you're trying to level up people, good luck. There's no way. You know, you're going to need some very, very high tier people to be able to defeat those fellows. But obviously it very much depends on which fellows you're talking about. Because if you're talking about those obscure soul judge knights, don't even get me started on those guys. They are very strong. So you do need uh, some very, very good units to deal with them. And I'm not even talking about horse archers. I think horse archers would still get beaten by them even even if just purely for the fact that they have so much hp and they are very numerous so if you attack one that has over 100 units in it yeah you're going to need about the same horse archers to be able to deal with them or at least that's what i have experienced so far because as i said to you previously i did a little bit of a test did a test battle off screen with these guys I had about 57, I think, I seem to remember, uh, for some reason, that very specific number, I seem to remember I had 57 of my eggplants, my, you know, version 1 eggplants, shall we say, and I thought to myself, I should be able to beat these guys, right? Because they have no shields. And it turned out they absolutely massacred us, and I had to, uh, I basically had to retreat. So, yeah, that... Uh, that is not very good. Although they did actually run away from me initially, which kind of made me a bit, uh, a bit overconfident in that uh, in that action. Because I thought to myself, well, I have a large army. I had, uh, you know, a decent amount of people in my army, including the eggplants, of course. And I thought, okay, well, the bulk of my army is probably going to be able to distract most of the obscure soul judge knights but then you know what happened they just cleave through them they just cleave through them in almost under i don't even know almost 15 seconds or something like that they were so incredibly fast i'm not going to be able to actually do this any further because i don't think i have any more space for companions so i won't be able to do that right now another 65 renown is ours and i'm going to be taking all of these people prisoner thank you very much there we go. And do we have any special units? Do you have any special units for me? I would very much appreciate it. They do not. Oh, actually, they do. Evil Flame Knights and Obscure Soul Judge Knights. Very nice. Thank you. Do they have any others, though? That is the question. No, they do not. All right. Well, that is that. And, uh, yeah, okay. So, uh, yeah, so now now we've got this. Now we've got this guy. Uh, he's... I, I, I don't know why this army is attempting to fight me so so hard, really. He decided not to explore. Thank you very much. Um, but, yeah, we are going to definitely have to fight these fellows. But I think we're probably going to have to leave that for the next episode. I'm going to assume that they want peace. No, they don't want peace. But I wouldn't be surprised if they are wanting peace quite soon. Yeah, as you can see, there's 100% support from, well, my one vassal. And um, I don't really, really want to do that. I don't really want to do that just yet. So we're not going to do that just yet. But we are going to attempt to take Tianlong. As you can see, there's only 191 defenders there. It should be very, very easy for us to take. And then hopefully in that time, we might be able to even move over to Marinia Castle and Dongzhu as well. Because that actually, I'm pretty sure these thieves don't have 
any garrison whatsoever. I'm pretty sure they have minimal defenses, so about 100, 150 units each, possibly. Maybe, maybe we'll get lucky with that, and then we'll be able to expand our territory even further without actually having to threaten the Aryans so badly that they'll declare war against us as soon as they can. <laughs> you know, that's the main... That's the main big deal there. Anyway, that's going to be it for this episode. I thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.